Back in the early 1970s, computing was still finding its voice. Giant machines, blinking lights, and endless stacks of punched cards ruled the scene. In the midst of all that silence and syntax, a man named Ken Thompson, co-creator of Unix with Dennis Ritchie, was quietly shaping the future. One day, while working on ED, I remember Brian Carringham stressed that point that this program or that editor was called ED and not ED. This is a line-based Unix text editor. Ken Thompson needed a way to search through a file for patterns that matched a regular expression. Something quick, something elegant and reusable. So he extracted a piece of code from ED wrapped it in a tiny standalone program and give it a name that would become the legendary grep. Now you can see on the screen in front of you the description of grep. This is a command in Unix and Linux operating systems that searches for patterns in each file. You have a file, you want to search for pattern and extract those words from those patterns. Patterns is one or more patterns separated by new line characters. Grab prints each line that matches a pattern. For example, you want to search for a word banana, but you have, for instance, banana rama and banana spot. So that's going to search for banana in those words, and Grab is going to extract those two words out from that file and prints them to your terminal. What about the name itself? Well, Grab came from the command inside ed g forward slash re forward slash p globally search for a regular expression and print matching lines. That's basically being read as grep. G stands for globally search, RE stands for regular expression, and the P stands for print matching lines. And just like that, a tool was born, small, sharp, and powerful, and it became one of Unix's greatest hits. All right, so what are we going to code exactly today? We are going to reverse engineer the original spirit of grep. Not the bloated modern versions with flags and options and so on, but the lean clean pattern searching machine that Ken Thompson originally wrote in about 50 or so lines of C. So we're going to build it from scratch also in the C language. That's going to read from a file or standalone input it's going to search for a pattern and it's going to print only the matching lines. No fluff, no magic, just solid C code and the elegance of old school Unix thinking. Or small tools did big things at that time. All right, so I'm in my Ubuntu Linux terminal here, a Windows subsystem for Linux. And uh, you should have your GNU compiler, all right? And you should have C installed, I'm not going to show you all of that. I will assume that you have C already installed on your machine, whatever the machine that you're using, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to use NeoVim in this tutorial, and I'm going to call my program my grab. All right, so um, I'm inside my NeoVim here, and first thing that I want to do, I want to include the standard input-output. And so I need the string dot header. So the standard input output basically lets the program read and write stuff, files, screen output, stuff like that. And uh, the string dot etch or string dot header, uh, this is just the toolbox for playing with text, if you will, like checking if one sentence contains another. Um, also, let me say here, um, define maximum lines, or maximum line 124. Um, here, simply what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, don't try to read more than 1024 characters per line. It's just like a setting, it's just like setting a safe boundary. Next, I want my main function and I will need two parameters. The first one is argc, and the second one is character with, oops, um, argv, right? With a set of uh, square brackets, array. I'm going to explain to you what's that. So in my main function, I need two different parameters. The first one is argc. Argc tells you how many words were typed, all right? So if you're searching for one or more words, 
Arx is going to be able to define that. And as far as the argv, that's where you hold those words, right, in that array. Next, I want to put a condition if the user running this didn't give the program enough information, uh, like what to search for, for instance. We're going to just throw an error. So I'm um, going to say if argc is less than two, um, in that case, I will f print f and I want the standard error. And we're going to be polite here. We're going to say usage percent sign s pattern file and with a new line and argv with the sub zero. So basically what I'm saying here in a very nice way that, hey, you're using me wrong. Here's how to do it. So um, if, for example, the user didn't search or didn't type what to search for. And as I said, that means that if the user didn't try to what the, the user is interested in finding, then we're going to return one exit code. Okay, so that's the first checking in our program. So I want the word or the phrase that we are trying to find in the text. So I'm going to type character asterisk pattern is equal to argv sub one. This is the word or the phrase that you are looking for in the file in the text. Next, I want to check if there is a file provided originally. If not, we're going to read from the keyboard or whatever's piped in. Um, I don't know if you know Unix piping. So for instance, you can pipe grep with a program that it's a dictionary basically. And piping was very widely used in Unix at that time. So um, as I said, you can pipe different programs uh, like you are putting them hand to hand and making them work together for the output that you're looking for. So um, back to our program here, I want to check if there is a file provided. So file and do FP with the asterisk. And that's going to be equal to argc more than two. If that's the, if that's the case, I would do F open argv two. And we're going to read that standard input, otherwise standard input. All right. So again, we are checking if there is a file provided. Otherwise, we're going to read from the keyboard or whatever is being piped in. But what if you have tried to open that file and failed? In that case, uh, we can send a warning or we can print a warning on the screen, which is going to explain why the file has failed to be open. Uh, file not found, for instance. All right, so we can do p error and we'll pass here f open. So p error, as you can see on the screen, prints a message describing the meaning of the value of error now. This function is a possible cancellation point and therefore not marked with um, underscore underscore throw. By the way, if you don't know, return zero, that means that everything is okay. Return one means that something went wrong. Next, I want to read line by line. So I'm going to pass maximum line here. Next, I want to use a while loop to keep reading the lines from the file. So I'm going to say while f gets line, size of the expression is the line and the second parameter is the fp. And inside that while loop, I'm going to ask does this line contain the pattern we are looking for or not? So I'm going to check out if stir stir because need line and the pattern. So if the text is uh, found in the pattern that I'm looking for, I'm going to put line and standard out here. Simply, it's like I'm saying we are happily to show that line on the screen. Right, so F puts is going to print on the screen the line where the word contains. So if you're again looking for banana and you have a word called banana rama, that's not going to show banana, of course, that's going to show banana rama as the word you're looking for exists 
within Bananarama or Banana Spot, for instance. And then finally here down, I want, if we have opened the file, we want to close it, right? Because we are good, responsible programmers. No memory leaks, no mess. We want to check out if FP is not equal to standard input. In that case, I want to close the file, All right? And we're going to return zero means that everything is okay and went smoothly. We want to say that all good with this um, exit code zero. All right, and that's basically everything. That's our program actually. Now let's create a sample file. Uh, it's going to be txt. I'm going to put any text. All right, so that's a simple text. You know, random words doesn't mean anything. Um, by the way, Python is bad. That's not true. I like Python, uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> just to provoke you guys. Uh, banana Rama, C is cool. Banana Spot, Banana Boat, pattern matching is cool. So you can um, the above here. I uh, I have put some spaces, and below here I have omitted some spaces. I have my grep folder, but it's empty because I've created the um, the files. In the, the in the home directory, so I want to copy sample text, and I want to copy also my grep. All right, now let's go to my grep folder and let's ls. All right, awesome. Um, so uh, let's now compile our C code. I'm going to do gcco my grep from my grep. Dot C and we should have our executable awesome that's the one with uh, that's the one with the green color this is the executable so now let's try our program let's do my grab and I want to look for Python for example and the file's name is of course sample.txt Python is awesome that's working Let's um, take a look to banana. That word exists in three different lines. Banana boat, banana ram, and banana spot. Sweet. Uh, what if I want to use the pipe input into it? So let's do cat. The file is sample.txt. And I want to look for banana. The same thing. All right. That should work as well. Let's do, for instance, hello. Let's do John. All right, that's empty. We don't have John in our file. Let's do world. Have you noticed that? I haven't even written the, the whole word. I only uh, wrote the first four letters, W or L. It was able to, um, you know, go in a loop line by line, search for, um, you know, starting from W and ending with L and, you know, retrieving that word. So that is what grab does. Basically, it searches, it loops over line by line, it searches for the pattern, and it gets us the word that we're the lines that we are um, potentially interested in, because it cannot get you the exact line that you're looking for. Well, you can also do this way, you can do my grab and we can say here for instance grab like that in the sample.txt there is nothing here called grep why because they are all capitalized but what if i change that to um you know small letters now we have an output grep is useful because the search is basically case sensitive you cannot use capital letters for words that are in the text in small letters. And that's it, guys. We just walked through how to recreate one of the most iconic tools in Unix history, that is grep, while paying tribute to Ken Thompson's original brilliance. And by breaking it down and rebuilding it ourselves in C, we didn't just learn how pattern matching works, we touched a piece of computing history, one line at a time. If you've enjoyed this little time travel into classic Unix thinking, give it a thumbs up, leave your thoughts or questions in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives like this. 
Until next time, keep building, stay curious, and code like it's 1974. Thank you so much, guys, for watching, and I will see you in the next video.